All right, so I start off this solo with some steel bands, and I'm visualizing this G chord shape, right? Just visualizing chord shapes to find chord tones, and I'm doing a half-step approach into that third, and then playing that G up on top. So this is essentially a double stop lick. I'm making up a double stop lick here with the band. Then I'm going to replace that that note with my first finger bending into the flat three and do a bend release down to the two and playing the flat seven. This is kind of cool because this gives me a G uh, dominant nine chord. And I let all those notes kind of ring into each other. Okay, so. After that, what I'm doing is I'm Going back to this position of this G chord, I'm sliding in and out, a half step, a lot of half step approaches. You'll see that. Um, sliding in and out of the root, grabbing the fifth and the, and the, uh, the root there, up top, grabbing the five and the flat five. So I get that dissonance. That sounds really cool when things are going by fast. Obviously, if I was playing a ballad, I wouldn't. Um, but at faster tempos, that stuff sounds cool. Back to that G, coming across here for a C. So it's kind of like a four over one sound. Okay, so after I come out of uh, that move there, I'm gonna slide into the fifth from a half step underneath. And then a hammer on to the third. Then chromatically going down into uh, the C here. Open A. That's going to give me time to get to my C again. So that second C is landing right on the downbeat of the chord change. Okay, so now I'm playing over his C. And this is what, one of those scale patterns I wanted to show you guys that's a really cool scale pattern. But basically what I'm doing is for each one of the chord tones of that C chord, I'm doing a little half step approach underneath to it. So playing the note, half step underneath, back up, you can call that a lower neighbor. Um, doing that with the third, the fifth, the root, the third, the fifth. Um, but how I'm connecting those is with uh, diatonic scale steps. So I'm kind of using that major scale. So I have passing tone from the scale, passing tone from the scale, passing tone from the scale. Here's my flat seven. Passing tone from the scale, back to the root, passing tone, passing tone. So really cool way to just play an arpeggio. Okay, now before I go back to G, I'm grabbing this A here, and I'm going to do a hammer-on pull-off from that flat seven. Now when I get back to G, I'm going to slide into the major third. You know, really kind of establish that I'm back in G major. And that B flat comes up to B natural now. So I'm going to slide into that twice. Come down the pentatonic scale. I'm going to do that same thing down an octave, but this time I'm changing up the articulation, so I'm doing a hammer on. So I got down a minor pentatonic scale, root, flat seven, uh, five, four. And then sliding into that third again. So I basically played the same idea three times in three different registers. And I connected them with different scales each time. So the first time was the pentatonic. Second time, minor pentatonic. And then sliding in there. Uh, now I'm going to dance around this G, A, F sharp, G. Got a little muted stroke in there. Back to the G. 
Now, to set up this D chord, I like doing this a lot because this really helps things from keeping, keeping things from sounding boxy. So you kind of want to walk into a chord change, um, kind of anticipating bringing a, adding momentum into a chord change rather than always just playing right on top of the measure. measure. So for that D chord, I'm walking up from the B here and then landing onto the D. So and that's pulling me into that D chord. Now for the D chord, I'm using another kind of bluegrass flat picking pattern that I use a lot, or I use as templates for making up other licks. So this one is not so much based on uh, embellishing the arpeggio rather than just kind of putting in passing tones. So I come up the D7 shape. I'm kind of visualizing that D7. There's your D. There's your D7. Just took the fifth, moved it up. Root three, five, six, seven, six, five. It's like a boogie bass line, basically. Then I have a half step approach to the third. Okay, and this is gonna uh, get me to set up the next half of that arpeggio. Chromatically connecting it to the fifth there. Oh, sorry. And by putting that chromatic connection in there, that lets that fifth note land right on the downbeat and sets up a third flat picking uh, pattern that's really useful. So this one is starting on a chord tone and walking down a measure of eighth notes right through uh, the uh, uh, pentatonic scale. Add a little flat seven in there. Then I'm gonna do it off of the root. And rather than resolve it, I'm gonna set up this bend here. I could do that off of every note. That's kind of how you would look at that pattern. You could do it off of the third, off of the root, off of the fifth, um, and it works ascending too. But I come down from the root there, stop on the E to set up this kind of James Burton-esque kind of uh, double stop like here where I'm playing the flat seven and I'm gonna bend the four into the fifth. So, Visualize a G7 chord there if you're looking for a flat seven. Bending that up using two fingers. And what I'm going to do, why that's bent, is I'm going to go back and forth between the two fingers kind of popping the strings and the pick coming across just to play the G string. So I got. And that's a really cool sound. So I'm going to do that, resolve that bend, kind of coming down the blues scale there. Then before I resolve it, I'm making a double stop lick before I resolve it. So I got the G and C and then sliding in a half step into the B. That was something we talked about earlier in the chord shape section about making double stop licks. There's a diatonic step above, half step underneath, sliding into pitch. Okay, there you go.